It's the political dead duck, and it's August the second, two thousand and nine, and this is uh, John Perkins' um, economic hitman. I'll put a link up in the left. Uh, Confessions of an economic hitman. I'll put the link up in the left-hand corner. Mr. Perkins would go into a country and try to get the natural resources um, through bribery and uh, economic forecast and praising up leaders and, and, and bribes, of course, and everything else. Now, what is interesting is that if the economic hitman didn't work, they would send in the jackals, and the jackals would uh, try to have a coup, and if that didn't work, of course, they'd go for assassination. Now, if assass they couldn't assassinate him, much like uh, Saddam Hussein, then, of course, they went to war. And that's how the power of that B works. Now, they recruited this guy. Uh, he had a lot of weaknesses, and he had the three major weaknesses, of course, was uh, sex, power, and money. And he wanted all that very bad. He grew up in a boarding school. His dad was a private teacher at a private school. So... Uh, he he seen all these rich kids coming, and then on the weekends or holidays they would go home, and he would be stuck at school all by himself. So he had this longing, this want to live that lifestyle. And of course, the powers that be would seek out these vulnerable people and use them for that. And you know, we're not going to say he's not scum and he's not a low life because he is. We're not going to say uh, anything good about him. Only that. He did tell the truth finally. He did put a book out there, even though he was threatened, harassed, uh, and, you know, threat, uh, the, they promised him money and everything else. He tried everything to get him to not write this book. Now, he wrote the book when 911 happened, because he seen that as part of the bigger plan of a global strategy for natural resources worldwide. Um, and, like, his job was to go in and betray the country to get the natural resources. So he would go in and get big money uh, to a country. The country couldn't pay the money, so he say, I want my pound of flesh. Give me uh, your rainforest. Because it was all about where the oil was to, and that's what they were after. Um, you know, he gets into great detail of how vulnerable he was to the pat on the back, the money, sex, power, and everything else, and, and how he would demand his employees to give him the forecast that he wanted, inflated forecast. Um, and he's very articulate, he's very to the point, and you can you can tell that his conscience has got the better of him. He is scum, but he is telling the truth. Uh, it makes for a great, it's a two hour, uh, almost a two hour video, uh, two two part video, one fifty three minutes rather than one forty nine minutes. And if you really want to understand the inner workings of global globalness and how they go after the natural resources worldwide, and when they don't get them, then ultimately there's going to be an assassination, an overthrow, or a war as a last resort. Not necessarily the last resort, because that means they get the resources a lot easier by killing the people that are stupid enough to uh, not research why they're going to war. And I've done another video about that, but it's the political dead duck, and best wish to you and yours. We'll talk later. Bye-bye. Start out and tell us what was the motivation in writing your book, uh, Confessions of an Economic Hitman. 9-11 was the motivation. I put off writing this book for a long time. I was sworn to secrecy. I'd been bribed not to write it. I'd been threatened when I tried to write it earlier. And, and I'd postponed it. I'd, I'd put off writing it uh, until 9-11. And when 9-11 happened, I knew this story had to be told. Uh, it, it has to get out there. Uh, most of the American people are, are totally unaware of what really goes on with our foreign policy, of what our banks and corporations are doing around the world, of the way we're building empire, and of the way we're irritating people. We, we're creating a lot of enemies around the world. But the fact of the matter is, our job was to convince other countries to take very large loans and then to convince the World Bank and other such organizations to give these countries huge loans, let's say a billion dollars, to Ecuador 
to build big infrastructure projects, uh, power plants and transmission lines and distribution systems, ports, highways, industrial parks, uh, things that that didn't benefit anybody except the very wealthy people in those countries who were quite corrupt, and we corrupted them. So our job was to convince, let's say, Ecuador to accept a billion-dollar loan, convince the World Bank to give Ecuador a billion-dollar loan. Ninety percent of that billion dollars would come back to the United States to pay for Halliburton, Bechtel, these kinds of, or, or, the, or these types of companies uh, to build uh, the, the infrastructure, and then and which would only serve the wealthiest people in those countries. And then the country would be stuck with this huge debt, which over time would continue to be refinanced and get larger and larger and larger. So that in fact today, Ecuador owes more than 50% of its national budget just to pay down its debt service, which means there's very little money left to go to pay for the education or health services for the poor people who are the ones who suffered from these projects. It was their rivers that were destroyed as we built hydroelectric plants. It was their land that was destroyed, and while well, a few of their people got wealthy, as a few of ours did. Uh, and so now they're saddled with this incredible debt that they can't possibly pay. And so we go in and demand our pound of flesh, very much like the mafia. That's why we called ourselves hitmen. And so today, for example, this is actually what's happened in Ecuador. And, and today, um, we need Ecuador's oil. We need the oil from this Amazon area where these indigenous people live that I worked with as a Peace Corps volunteer. And we tell Ecuador, since you can't pay off your loans, what you need to do is turn over your Amazon to our oil companies. And that's what they're doing. And the indigenous people there, the ones I worked with now, have basically declared war. They said, we're not allowing these oil companies to come in. We're going to fight to the very last man if we have to. It's a terrible situation. And what it is all about is building empire. We've done this in every country around the world that has resources that we covet. Often this is oil in places like Indonesia, Nigeria. Uh, Ecuador, Venezuela, Colombia, so many different places, but sometimes it's other resources. For example, in Panama, it was the Panama Canal. And in this process, we've managed to create the largest empire in the history of the world, and we've done it largely without military might. It's been done primarily through economic hitmen like me. Now, when the economic hitmen fail, as we've done some, as we did in Panama with Omar Torrijos and in Ecuador many years ago with Jaime Roldos when I was there. When we fail, the jackals are sent in. And these are CIA sanctioned troublemakers. They, they will try to foment coups in a country. They'll try to overthrow the president. If they fail, if they're not able to do that, then they'll assassinate him. And Jaime Roldos of, of Panama, who was not overthrown, so he was assassinated. And uh, and uh, Omar Torrijos, of, of Jaime Rolos of Ecuador, Omar Torrijos of Panama, uh, the same thing happened. We economic hitmen failed, the jackals went in and assassinated these presidents. It happened with Allende in Chile, Arbenz in, in, in Guatemala, uh, it's part of what Vietnam was about, and, and when the jackals fail, and the economic hitmen both fail, as in Iraq, the, the final step is for us to send in our young men and women to die and to kill. And that's what we're doing in Iraq today.